Welcome to Pastor Paul's daily devotional taken from the book, The Renovation of the Heart in Daily Practice. By the end of the video, see if you can figure out what is behind me. Uh, we're up to chapter 9 today, and it is entitled Possessing the Land. The body, as well as the other aspects of the individual, can be reformed to become our ally in Christ-likeness. How? The land promised to the Israelites was one of incredible goodness, flowing with milk and honey, as it is repeatedly described in the Bible. But it still had to be conquered by careful, persistent, and intelligent human action over a long period of time. In the beginning of the conquest of the promised land, the walls of Jericho fell down to make clear God's presence and power. But that never happened again. The Israelites had to take the remaining cities through hand-to-hand -hand warfare, though always with divine assistance. What was then true of the promised land of the Israelites is true of individual human beings who come to God. The Israelites were saved or delivered by grace, just as surely as we are through Jesus. But in both cases, Grace means we are to be, and God enables us to be, active to a degree we have never been before. Paul's picture of grace is this, And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that always having all sufficiency in everything, you may have an abundance for every good deed. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8. We therefore live in hot pursuit of Jesus Christ. My soul followeth hard after thee, the psalmist called out. And Paul's panting cry was that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death in order to participate in the life of his resurrection. Philippians chapter 3 verses 10 to 11. What are we to say of those who think they have something more important to do than that? The work of spiritual formation into Christ-likeness is the work of claiming the land of milk and honey, in which we are individually and collectively to dwell with God. It's quite startling to begin to believe that transformation into Christ-likeness is really possible. You and I really could become persons who are kind to our enemies, who listen attentively to people who even annoy us, who work tirelessly to help others without hoping to get any kind of credit. To possess this promised land of transformation, we will have to arrange our lives differently. As we become more interested in this, we may find ourselves inadvertently giving up the hours we used to do things like spending uh, and, and shopping or even watching television. Instead, we will look forward to reading the Gospels and picturing the selfless, luminous person of Jesus, whom every government embezzlers love to have dinner with even. We will be transfixed by seeing Jesus in the midst of this world, even loving his enemies, exuding love, even as he washed the feet of someone who was to betray him, Judas. Such transformation, friends, is possible. God will do this. Make all grace abound to you and to me. That always having all sufficiency in everything we may have an abundance for every good deed, like being transformed into the image of Jesus. God will direct us in our cooperative efforts to possess this land. For now, the question is this. Do I really believe transformation can happen in my life? Am I conscious during the moments of my day that everything that I do can contribute to this 
if I have an understanding and a willingness of how spiritual formation actually works. So today's experiment. Speak to God about this incredible possibility. If you need to express honest doubts that you can ever be formed into Christ-likeness, do so. Tell God what you admire most about the Lord Jesus. And what would you most like to be able to do in your life through the cooperation of the Holy Spirit with God in that change? Thank God then for the opportunity to explore this transformation process. So again, I just encourage you, pray over what you've just heard, think about it, and we'll continue on next time. So let's pray first. Father, I just thank you so much for Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that even now you are working in us. And I pray for a holy excitement, a holy joy within us to see the possibilities that our life can radically be transformed into the image of Jesus. Lord, for those areas that we struggle with, we confess them. We bring them before the altar of God. And we ask for the Holy Spirit to show us practical ways, show us spiritual ways that we can actually change. So again, Father, we bless you and we pray, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, thank you for listening and uh, God bless the rest of your day.